Hello my friends, it's Mary with Mary Stampin' Cafe. So glad to be here tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I hope everything's going to go okay. <laughs> we are having some crazy windy weather. Crazy, crazy windy weather. So we we'll, shall see. <laughs> it's, hopefully it'll be all great. It's just been rocking and rolling here with all sorts of wind, but we haven't gotten um, any really of the rain that they've talked about today. It's kind of strange. But anyway, um, sorry if I look disheveled. I uh, did a bunch of raking in my yard this morning, getting all the pine cones and tree branches and everything. And then I was gonna mow the lawn and um, lo and behold, I think we have a bad battery because we have an electric uh, lawnmower and the battery pack is a goner so hopefully my husband's gonna pick up another one and then we can do that so welcome welcome hey Becky thanks for saying something welcome welcome hope you're doing well oh thanks for sharing Becky I appreciate that yeah it's a uh, Gosh, it's hard to think we just have one more week of June left. It's amazing. It's like, wow. I'm so, like, just got done with uh, the school year and working on my stamp room now. It's a me complete mess. If you see my counter behind me, it uh, needs an overhaul for sure. It is just 6.01, so. Hey, Rhonda. Hi, B. I was just saying. Got a quick start tonight. <laughs> I think I got on at like 5.59. I'm not sure. But I'm just like hoping because we have so much wind. I'm just I'm just hoping we'll be we'll be good. So how's everybody doing? Everybody doing okay? I went down to my sister-in-law Arla's in Rainier and I stayed. Well, we did the creativity now and I went home, but then I came back the next day. So I could be there with her dog who likes to escape out of his pen, out of her pen. So I, I stayed and I stayed the night on Sunday into Monday. And, um, <laughs> uh, hey, Veronica, there were, uh, she told me about, uh, bats that like to kind of come in when you open the door at night to like the, let the dog in and out kind of thing. I wanted to give me a heads up. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I didn't do any of the letting the dog in and out at night and this and that. And I'm sitting there watching TV and um, a bat's flying around. Crazy. Went upstairs. I closed the bedroom door where it was. Hey, Linda. I was like, oh, no. Mm -mm. Not happening. Oh, I was trying to stay out of the hot and humid weather. Oh, my gosh. I know. Oh, over in the east, Midwest and east, it's just horrible just so bad oh we are uh, we cooled down a bit today with the the wind and everything kind of the little bit of weather that's going on but you know other than that thanks for sharing appreciate that you guys um i'm off for you know the summer now and it's kind of like hi i wonder if i should do some if i should do facebook live a little bit earlier what do you guys think of that i know those of you that are here on the west coast with me that might be like if i do five o'clock that may like be right at your dinner time and that wouldn't work out for you but for people on the east that join or midwest that might be better for them during the summer i don't know oh my gosh yes oh they won't get into the puppy pool oh no oh puppy pools are so great they're, they don't know what they're missing. They just don't know what they're missing, right? <laughs> For sure. My dog wouldn't even know what the heck was happening. You know, <laughs> he just wouldn't even know. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. All right, you guys. Well, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to do a little, uh, oh, you got in it, <laughs> but the puppies won't follow you. <laughs> Sorry for blowing my nose, you guys. Anyhow, okay. Let me go ahead and switch over. And there you guys can see I've got, uh, I am ready. 
for the 4th of July here. Got my red, white, and blue <laughs> M&Ms. <laughs> peanut M&Ms now. They have to be peanut, but anyway. I have a few, I got some cards to share. So this was like kind of fitting for my M&Ms here. We've got, uh, Jessica sent this card. It says, God bless America, America the beautiful, happy Independence Day. Well, no, I thought, no, isn't that nice? And so I love the way she used that arch. Um, and then I'm looking at um, her paper that she used, and I'm thinking, where in America is this? Right? <laughs> well, almost anywhere. I mean, we have places like this at, you know, in Seattle area that look like that. But I love the little ship wheel that she had there. Right? And then we have V's card. V sent this in snail mail for the current card sketch challenge that's on the Stampin' Cafe um, social group. So this was her card. And I love, E, how you do this little border to accent along to create much interest. You did that on the inside as well, and that's just great. I think that is so cool. I kind of forget to do that. But uh, we got some moody mauve going on here and some bubble bath, I think. So just great. That's a great one. And right now, Veronica is the only one who has entered this month. And then this was my card, just as a sample idea that I had done with um, um, ba -ba 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 -ba, the sketch challenge for, um, what is it? Freshly, fresh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Then I was just going to show you guys, I had done, uh, worked on some of uh, Kendra's challenge, Kendra's card challenge they put up on Stampin' Cafe where she had, um, she does these sketch challenges that they go for like three months. Hey, Sherry. <coughs> and Susan and I kind of were working on them at a place. Well, I'm going to just show you a few of them, but you create like 13 cards and we got through nine and then we just couldn't do any more. But anyway, I'm going to show you ones that I kind of liked. So this was one where you kind of cut your strips um, and did that type of design. This was another one. And what was kind of interesting about this one, I really couldn't figure out what was the purpose of this kind of thing here. It just, it was kind of strange to me, but it was, you know, but there it is. Then there was this one that I thought was pretty okay. And the idea of it um, was, um, you know, using your 12 by 12 papers and cutting them down. So there was this one and I just love our the butterflies that we had. And then this one. So those were just some of the, the ones. <coughs> I'm not, just not sharing the other ones because I really just didn't care for them <clears throat> excuse me gosh you guys I'm sorry so there's some cards busy ballooning time of year not a whole lot of time to craft oh really Sherry oh probably beautiful time oh hey bunny no worries I didn't really have lots of cards to share at all so I was kind of sharing some of uh, my things but anyway you guys on the Stampin' Cafe you still have a little time to uh Put your card together with kind of that layout idea of the offset circles or shapes or anything you want. And so that's those. All right. Well, I was trying to decide which one I wanted to do first, but I think we'll go with the kind of easiest one first. Let me just, yeah. Oh, good. Set those aside. So I have gotten this card. Um, and it's basically that end where you five and a half by eight and a half score at four and a quarter and then you score at two and an eight and then you fold it back and usually we fold it back and it's just like that but this one's using that pretty paper and it went like that so I um, thought okay but I was feeling a little weird about this just being the paper. I just thought it laid a little bit funny and maybe it should have a whole nother thing behind it. 
So I'm going to be using a bit of the Thoughtful Wishes and then the dies. I'm really going to be utilizing the dies here and then just the sentiment. And then, of course, maybe for the inside of the card, a little something. And then I'm also going to pull in the Unbounded Love dies. And I'm sorry you're seeing all this craziness in here because what I was doing is I was die cutting out to see which ones um, some of the dies cut out the inside and the outside. So for example, I'll just use this and this doesn't, but it could. There are some dies that will go through and then this oval will pop out and then you'll have the scalloped frame. That didn't doesn't happen with this one. So what I have in here are all the ones that don't cut out both. So that helps me know which ones cut out normally and are not going to give you another layer. And so that's these here. Now if you've you've been with me and I did like this card when you die cut this out this whole piece inside comes out and you just have the frame so it's a little different and then on this page because there's lots of dies all of these dies and this one cut out the inside so here's this one right here and see what it did? It gives you the frame and then it gives you the inside piece. So you could do it twice and then have a different color for your frame than you do for your sentiment. So all of these, here's this one, where it cuts out and then it has this inside that just falls out, which is right here. Nope. Which one is it? Yes, it is this. So that's that's kind of what comes out of it. Now you could just put them right back in. But when you're crafting and all of a sudden you, you run a die through because you think you're going to do something and then the whole inside falls out. So here's this one with the flowers. You get this really pretty frame and this popped out of it. And so... I'm kind of keeping them separate so I know which ones do what. I know that's a little crazy. I just haven't organized it very well. But that's what happened to Susan and I when we were crafting and we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do. She had some sort of set that also had all that going on. So, anywho. I am using the Petunia Pop in color and I um, went ahead and I folded and scored at four and a quarter and it looks like I scored at two and an eighth. So it's two and an eighth that I did on this, okay? And then I went ahead and I took the designer series paper and I cut it down to five by three and three quarters because that would be like a layer, second layer. And so this one is five and a quarter by four. And so we have this layer like so. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue that down. And this, um, this designer series paper was the one that was called Life is a Journey or something like that. Hey, Char. The dies are the, um, this one, these are the Unbounded Love dies. They kind of went with the suite of products that was, was with this designer series paper of the cards I was sharing with you. That's all from the Unbounded Love suite of products, but yeah. So those are the unbounded love dies. Now when I cut this six by six piece down, you have this piece and where's the other one? This one. 
these actually came together to make the six by six piece of paper but this was going to go down on the inside of the card and I didn't want this whole piece to be on the inside because when I put my white on the inside and this is also cut at three and three quarter by five you know if you put this in where are you going to do any of your writing? So I didn't like that. And I also don't like that much. I think that's just too much as well. So I would rather use this on another card. And then I'm just going to use this for the inside. And since I did that, I'm going to go ahead and glue it down. There we are. Now I'm not going to glue this down yet because I shouldn't have glued that paper down either. <laughs> now what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and lay this down and I'm going to glue it kind of even bordered with this with the side here and the side over here. I want it to be evenly bordered. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my seal and just stop short. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and lay that down and I'm just going to come over here and have it just kind of upside down like this just so I can see and the top and the bottom. And that looks pretty good. And so that just to me is just so much more sturdy than the other card I was sharing. Okay. Hold that down really well. All right. So now what we're going to do is I've got my Mossy Meadow and my Petunia Pop. And I'm going to pull in now the Thoughtful Wishes dies. And I'm going to pull out this one and this one here. So what we have here is we have some really pretty little flowers on the stems. But then here you'll notice we have the stems, but there's no flowers. So you'll see a lot of projects online. Hey, Jolene. You'll see a lot of projects online where they've just run this one through maybe in white or yellow or something, and that's all that they do. Then you'll see others that do them in a pretty color and then they'll take this and then they'll offset them. Well, this actually was created for it to line up and for you then to have your stem, which would be probably green, and then your flowers another color. So that's how they would run through the machine. And so that's what we're gonna do so I can show you how we put those together, okay? And I haven't um, used my Thoughtful Wish as much. In fact, I didn't even think I had this bundle. So let's go ahead and grab our plates. And I'll go ahead and I'll just run the red with the pink one through. And then you'll be able to see what I mean. Let's set that aside. Right. So you see they're all kind of stuck in there. So let me grab my little tool. And I'll go ahead and pop these right out. All right, and then see, there you go. You've got those really pretty, petite little flowers. But the problem is your whole stems are petunia pop. And that might look a little strange. You know, you might be doing a silhouette, and then that's okay. Hey, Teresa, no problem. So you take your other die with the mossy meadow. And then we're going to run this through. And 
And then we've got our mossy meadow. Ooh, and that came right out. Very nice. And so then here you've got your you've got your branches. So we'll go ahead and see when I lay it down on top, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to line it up together, right? And lay it over top. So I'm gonna get my barely glue here. Now you might not be using such a contrasting color with the mossy meadow and the petunia pop. It's quite um, bold colors and you might not be doing such bold colors but this will line up really well and you won't even see the petunia pop underneath it all. Okay. This is where tweezers would come in so handy, Mary. And you have tweezers. What you doing? So then I'm just going to find a spot Really, I can do this, you guys. I can, I can do this. And you just kind of keep playing with it a little bit. Your glue's gonna give you a little time. You just kind of do a little squinch, a squinch and a squeeze. Okay. needs to come up just a little bit. Yeah, the green is down too far. People are thinking, I am not going to mess with that, but you will, and it's awesome. I mean, it's so fun. I just think it's fun getting them lined up. Like I said, that liquid glue gives you lots of time to play around with it. Almost there. And look how pretty that is. See, just a little hint. That glue is just so nice. It's just giving all the time I need. And now I have pretty, pretty flowers on my green stem. Isn't that neat? So neat. All right. So there we are. Got that. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my sentiments. And I think what I want to do is this one This might be the one that I want to do. Coming in here just like this. Although, I kind of like the idea of maybe coming in with the petunia pop and maybe embossing the sentiment in white. Hmm, because that's pretty bright having that there. I could just sponge around it. What do you guys think? Do you want me to do the uh, petunia pop and emboss in white? Hey, Cindy. Or do you want me to go ahead and just use the white and um, just sponge around it? Hope you're doing well, Cindy. I hope you're staying cool. What do you guys think? Want me to emboss white or just stamp?
do the petunia pop. Okay, I can do that. Let me just grab my um, my embossing. All right, so we got Petunia Pop. Let me grab my embossing powders. And my old caddy there. And let's find our white. I think I have white in here. But, you know, iridescent eyes. Silver, white, yes. There's our white. Never know, I might have heat and stick there too. <laughs> Plug in that. I actually have Versamark on the table. All right. We are ready. So if I'm going to do this one, dearest friends, thinking of you fondly, I appreciate you. Yeah, we'll do thinking of you fondly. No, I think you make bite be life better. Nope. Thinking of you fondly. Okay, let's just tear a piece off and get our die. Let's go ahead and cut our paper. We'll put this through. Now, I am going to die cut first, stamp, and emboss. I know we always say stamp first and then punch out or die cut out, but when you're embossing with embossing powders, I don't want to mush it when I put it through the embossing machine because this is gonna press down with the rollers and I, I don't want it to, um... hey Cheryl. I don't want it to, you know, mush it down. That would not be good. All right, so let's take a look at our embossing here. Let's put the stamp set aside, bring this in. Oh my goodness, set some things aside here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Versamark. Oh, look how dirty my Versamark pad is. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> I took a really clean one to my sister-in-law's. All right. So we have thinking of you fondly. I'm going to stamp off just because I haven't used. And I'm just going to do it right in the tray. I'm going to do it over a bit. There it is. Cover your Versamark pad before bringing out the powder. Go ahead and freely put over that embossing powder. A little staticky on the paper, so we get our little. Our little shadows. There we are. That looks great. We'll go ahead and close this up. Oh, no, we won't close it up. Let's pour it back in here. So you guys, just to know, those, those of you who are local, check out my events. Saturday Stampin' Chat this month is going to be, or for July, is going to be Christmas in July. 
all of our projects will be Christmas. So fun. Lots of places do Christmas in July, so. Now all I'm doing is holding it over. I'm not, I'm not waving it back and forth or anything. And what I'll do is I'll turn it for this end. Looks like we are done. I'm going to do one more here by the U just to make sure. Whew. That's an old, uh, old embossing gun and kind of smells. Thinking of you fondly. Isn't that pretty? I love doing a little bit darker cardstock and then embossing white. It's very pretty. Okay. So a little embossing refresher. Don't do enough of it, I think. So we'll bring this back in. This is gonna come sit right in here like so. Then I'm gonna bring this in, and I did want it laying over it. Or do I want it? And then have a ribbon. No, I wanna do it like this. I want this to be over it. But, I would like to raise it up with dimensionals, so then that's an issue. All right, we're gonna raise it up with dimensionals and then it might have to go behind. So, Char, I hope you've been feeling okay. I know you have another surgery that you're gonna be doing. So you really need to think about where you're putting your um, your glue dots. Because I wanted that to, but that doesn't work. Oh, Mary. Guess we're going to do that. Okay. You can see on the back I don't have it perfectly lined up, but I have it lined up just about right. I think that's pretty cool. And you have all sorts of different color combinations you can do. So you guys, what's really interesting coming up, um, I don't know if you remember bonus days, but bonus days are coming back and it's going to be one of the, for every $50 you spend, you get a um, $5 bonus coupon. Now what's really interesting, do you guys believe, would you believe that every year when Stampin' Up! does this, there's people that don't ever redeem their bonus coupons. It's like, what? Why would you not do that? Everybody loves a discount. Everybody loves bonuses, right? <laughs> it's kind of funny. But it happens. I know. You know, we get these, um, you know where you rub off with a coin? It's a gold coin on a card. Well, the exchange, the name exchange, puts those out quite a bit. Now this ribbon's really pretty. This is the in color ribbon and it's very, um, it's almost like a linen feel. In fact, it seems very much like a linen. It's really nice. It's light. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and put that here. Since I put my sentiment off to the side, it could use something. So that'll go there. And then I'll find some gems. But you guys, my other project's gonna be so much fun. 
my sister-in-law Pam bought a couple things for me a while back. And you know, when I'm working and all that, I don't have a lot of time to get into things very much. I'm doing two glue dots. I'm popping that right there. And I'm going to actually pull them out, and I'm actually going to share them today, which is so much fun. Thinking of you fondly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There we go. There's not really another sentiment to um, continue on that thought. So, come on, tape. The stamp and seal is really tight for some reason. And a little wink of Stella on the flowers never hurt anyone. I'll even get the ones here on the paper. Pretty, pretty. Very in, very uh, monochromatic, right? We've got a bit of that uh, mossy meadow, but it's all about that petunia pop, isn't it? There we go. But that's a really great, um, this Thoughtful Wishes, I just, now that I have it out and I'm starting to play with it, it's like, man, I love it. I saw somebody who did a really great uh, kind of little technique with this. Um, I'll have to do up something like that and share it as well. All right, so that's that. And the Unbound Love dies. The, uh, that was the one that I took the um, sentiment piece for. Okay. All right. Well, let's set that aside. Okay. So this is what I'm going to talk to you about. I'm so excited. So we had gotten in the make a card, send a card group. Somebody had sent one of the rocker cards. And these are Gemini's stepper rockers. So my sister-in-law bought these for me. She said, I just couldn't pass it up, Mary. I had to get these for you. But I have not been able to play with them. But I am going to now. So I'm not going to be doing the scallop one because I'm doing a little bit more of a rustic um, card. But this is a scallop one. And then this is the um, standard one. So let me just show it to you. So this is what it is. This is how it comes. This is what you get. And... Notice I have one here on this side, but not on this side. This one popped out and fell on the floor somewhere. And it's really okay because I'm not going to necessarily use it. But we are going to create a really cute card. And I'm going to be using the cutest cows for mine. And I'm going to be using early espresso. And I'm using a piece of this. And this is from the Country Woods suite of products. This is the Country Woods designer paper. And this is the one that's very, gosh, I want to call it just kind of like a seaside boho, all of those colors. But it's got the wood grains and the slates. And this is the piece I'm using here. But it's got some great textures. There's the Country Lace, and this was the Country Woods designer paper. And this one's really nice. I love this one. It's got kind of the grays and the browns in here together. And there you are. That's that. So I'm using this piece right here. Now what I'm doing is if you take a look at the sample, they have the base, and then there's the inside pieces. So the Early Espresso is going to be my base. And then this is going to be my layer. So I have to move you guys up because I have to bring my big machine up to cut it. I guess I could have just had them cut, but then you wouldn't be able to see. And I want you to see it. And these are kind of getting really big, but you know what? I see lots of um, Pinterest things where people are putting up these cards and they're giving you, hey, get a template and a tutorial on how to create it and all of that. And you know what? I don't have any time for that. 
So just give me a template that's already made, that's already die cut, so I don't have to score and I don't have to burnish and I don't have to fold. So my sister-in-law just did a wonderful thing for me, didn't she? So I'm using the outer one. And I'm gonna go ahead and die cut that out. I know you probably can't see real well, but it's just gonna run right through. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna cut and going to give you all of those beautiful score lines just like that, right? So I don't have to measure, I don't have to use my scoring board, I don't have to you know, cut this part and score that part. So this is what you get. And what it's done is it's done this slit right here. So what I do, set that aside. What I do is I just kind of pull it up like so. And then I know this is gonna fold down and I pinch it. I'm gonna pinch this, cause that's gonna fold down and that's gonna fold down. And you can see then that as I start doing that, there it is. So it's kind of has this little step right here. You can see that down in there. And I've got my base of my rocker. Okay. So I'm just going to make sure I've scored that. Well, not score, but really push those down. Now, remember I told you that little piece I had right here, there's two of them and you do need two of them because they would go down on the down right here. But you know what? I'm not going to do that because nobody sees it. So why, why do I need to do that? So to me, that's just an extra step. Don't like it. Okay. So I've got my base. Now I need to bring in my other beautiful piece, this one right here. And I now need to take this piece. Now this is not just one piece. You've got this, which is going to be the back of your rocker. Then you've got this piece that's gonna be the front piece of the rocker. And you have the two sides. So I'm going to put my sides down because I want to, I want to have, let me turn this around. I want to have similar designer paper on my sides. See what I'm saying? I don't want one side to be, I'm going to switch these. That's going to be in the front. That can be one of the sides. And then this can be one of the sides. And they're similar in what stress distressing they have. And then that's going to go right there for the back. And the back I'm keeping pretty plain. That could be where you write your message. Because I don't think you would open it up to have a message inside. Oops. Let me bring this back a little bit. A little bit here. Now I'll put those through. <laughs> crunch, crunch, crunch. Hear all that. All right. And now on this, you can get two of them on this piece of six by 12 designer paper. So there we have our pieces for our layers, which is again, great because it's already done for me. All I have to do is cut them out. I don't have to do anything else. All right. That's all we need to be cutting. Anything else I've already done. So we're ready for it. Oops. Come here, you. So let me just set these aside. All right. And my machine can go back down. And I'm going to bring you back down. Cute little rocker. And yes, our cows are so cute. Let me just bring those little guys right here so you can stare at how cute they are. You can build your own cows, make your own cows. They're so cute. I'm just going to grab my liquid glue just because that liquid glue gives you an extra little minute if you need to kind of move a little bit. That's what I like about that. So this little piece is the front. 
you can see how that works just like so and you just even it up on each side top and bottom and glue it whoa see what I mean about it moving <laughs> that liquid glue just slid all over on me rude okay there we go let's go ahead and do the back look how rustic this is I love it it's so like boho rustic I am not a boho rustic kind of person but these cows lend itself to it so well and then this is the back so you could just do a white back if you wanted to have um, a, you know something to say to somebody there we go and now these you just have to make sure you have the right ones you have the curve going out here so that matches the side I don't remember who it was that did the step rocker um, and why is it called a step rocker you, you see how it's there's the step here we have the step right here that's why it's called the step rocker and then this one And just even them up there we are I mean look how cute that is already I know the rustic looks so fun all right so now let's talk about our cow oh I already have them on blocks and everything here's our sentiment here's our cow I'm doing the cow that's laying down now the only problem I really wish okay so we have a cow builder punch all right that's fine, but the cow builder punch only punches out these two heads. And it only punches out one body, if that. I don't, I'm not even quite sure. I haven't used it enough to know. But I'm going to do the laying down guy. So I've got a couple whites here, but here's what I have, you guys with the paper so you can have a focal point let me show you the case again where is it notice how they have the base right just like I have here but then when you come over here to the sample they've added a whole nother piece that's where you get to be creative so think of like Valentine's you could do the fantastic heart punches there's the scallop heart and the regular heart that you can do a nice big heart here would be really cute um, but it has this um, scalloped square so what I did is I took the early espresso and I used my layering squares that Stampin' Up! doesn't have layering squares anymore that I know of I took one of the scallops that's just a little bit smaller in that designer paper so I could get this fun um, accent that I'm going to then add to the front of this like so. Okay, so let's glue that down. Now I've already did the, went ahead and did the die cutting, but it's perfect because when you cut out your base, you can see you're left with extra so you are able to just die cut those right out. Maybe you want to do circle, maybe you want to do, you know, rectangle or some other shape. There we are. Okay, so now I also have you guys, and I already did them. Okay, look. I went ahead in the stamp set, and there's two, there's actually three. Uh, we got the rooster, we got our chicken there, and our, where's the stamp set? And then you can see in here these cute, this cute milk can, and so I did the milk can. The only thing I didn't do, I wanted to do this little tiny chick to put on the cow's back, but I didn't think I'd be able to cut that one out. I mean, it was hard enough cutting these little guys out, because I'm, I'm not the, a great cutter. Um, 
I'm left-handed and the scissor blades are reversed and on with the regular scissors and that's okay but this little chick's gonna kind of be sitting with the milk can and this one's gonna be on the other side so why don't we put those in first before I do my cow all right show my little cow and my little milk cans gonna go here so let me put the milk can down first these guys are so stinking cute and they really weren't that hard to cut out at all they were pretty easy so I'm gonna have my milk can then this little chick's gonna be sitting with the milk can just kind of in front of it a little bit could you imagine you guys sitting here while I stamped them and then cut them out, colored them? <laughs> it would never have happened. That's why I did a little pre-work because this is too stinking cute. So there's this chick. And what I love is that they're opposite each other. So one can go on one side. They don't face, they face, they don't face, sorry, they don't face the same direction. They face each other. So fun. So it works out perfect. And this little guy is just going to be sitting over here having a humdinger time. Oh my gosh, look at that. How cute is that, you guys? So they're just sitting there rocking, rocking, rocking. All right, let's do it. Where's my cow? Now, I am using Early Espresso ink. I used Early Espresso ink for our little characters, too. I didn't use... Um, I didn't use black. So here's my little cow body. And then here's my little cow head. Now, when you look at your builder punch, the cow's head is at the top, the top. So I'm gonna go in with it this way. So I can just stamp him over here like that. Then I have my colors. I'm going to use my crumb cake and this one, which is, I think, um, oh, Smoky Slate. And my Smoky Slate is going to be for his hooves. Just got to do a couple little of his, I'm using Stampin' Right markers. And the reason for that is I'm coloring pretty small areas, and so I just like using the Stampin' Right. So my crumb cake for my brown cow, maybe something like um, pecan pie may have been more rustic-y brown, but that's okay. I'm going to do his little forehead here. Then I'll do his little ears. Isn't he cute? <laughs> He's so cute. All right, so let's go ahead and get our, our little head popped out. Yeah, I do say I wish that this would have been a die set. I just wish. There we go. There's this cute little head. <laughs> and I do have to fussy cut this, you guys, but you're going to see how quick and easy this is going to be. What I always do when I cut is I always try to find where are those straight lines that I can just roll along? So cute, his little, little lay in there. So it was awfully nice of my sister-in-law to get these for me. She's like, I was just at the store and I just couldn't resist. I thought they were so cute. And they are. They're very cute. 
All right, he's just about done. Just has this little spot right here. And one little piece right here from his back leg. And then I like to kind of take off that tip so it's not so pointy. Just seems odd to be so pointy. And there we go. He is cut out. Very cute. So this is the last week, you guys. Um, you know I have the sketch challenge on the Stampin' Cafe group for a prize. And it looks like Miss V, she's going to be going home with the prize because she's the only one that's entered so far. And then um, it's also the last week for Mystery Hostess. You know what the bundle savings is having Mystery Hostess this month. And if we get a minimum party, somebody's going to win the hostess dollars. So that's awesome. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on him here. And this is gonna go on the diagonal. So I'm gonna go ahead and have him, his tail might be just coming off the edge a little bit and that's okay. And then this cow his head is going to have a dimensional and his little head you can have his head tilted however you want I'm going to have it come kind of being straight up almost and there that is but look at how cute he is you guys Arr, he's so cute so then this is going to sit right here in the center so it's just this little bit that's going to get adhesive Uh huh. So I'm going to use my Stampin' Seal. Oh my gosh. It's so tight. And that is going to come right in here. I can come down as far as I want. I think I'm going to come all the way down to where these come out. Right on either side. Oh, excuse me, cow. All right, and there he is like so. Now the only thing we have left is our sentiment. So I've got a one and a quarter punch, and then I have our one and three eighths scallop punch that we had at one time. And I'm going to use It's Your Special Day, or What's Moo With You? Oh, okay you guys, It's Your Special Day, or What's Moo With You? I know, I love it. I know. Unfortunately, this particular cutest cow with the punch is not on the 10% off savings. It has to be with the dies. So I would suggest getting yourself the Thoughtful Wishes bundle or the Unbounded Love um, bundle because those are awesome too and you get additional 10% off. So am I doing what's moo with you or it's your special day? I knew you guys were saying moo. How did I know you were gonna say what's moo with you? How did I know? And I know it's gonna fit in a circle. All right, so remember I'm using our espresso. I have to take off your special day. See, I was gonna use a special day, but that's okay what you say goes because I think what's moo with you is funny so what is moo with you <laughs> all right so where is my one and a quarter let's see is it gonna work of course it's gonna work look at that you guys fits great in a one and a quarter and then I need my scallop. I need a one and three eighths, but I don't think I'm gonna get it out of this piece. Ooh, I am, look at that, you guys. Ah, just got it. These are now gonna to glue together. This is a very slight little scallop around it, which I like. I like that the scallop is very, very 
peeking out and that's it. Definitely want to use liquid glue with it because if you get off, you, you kind of lose your scallop. All right, so there's that. <laughs> this is so cute, I can't take it. It's so funny when I start playing with, so with it, I just want to keep going. So I am going to put this right down right here and I am going to do it with a dimensional just like the cow's head but I'll do two of them and there he is what's moo with you I think that the Chickens are also talking, but there he is. That's how he rocks. It's a rocker, and this is a step rocker because it's going to rock and roll. Now this other one, this one's the same idea. This is a step rocker as well, but you notice it has the scallop bottom. Let me show you the difference here. Exactly the same as the one I just did except that there's no scallop and this has the scallops. I like what they've done here is they put that big scallop circle. So your, your piece that you put in the center, this can be bigger because then you notice they didn't need to do anything over on the sides because they did such a big, big central focus. I think that's really cute. So that is the scallop one. Oh my gosh. Isn't that cute, you guys? <laughs> so what's Moo with you? So what you can do is then on the back side, you can write your note. This would be very easy to read through. I could use my early espresso marker and just write a quick little note on the back. You wouldn't open up to do anything. That, But isn't the cow cute? Oh, so cute. It's a rockin' cow. <laughs> what punch is that with the scallop? That's the one and three eighths scallop punch. But um, Cindy, I don't think Stampin' Up! has those scallop circle punches anymore. I think you have to do the, there's the scallop circle dies. And you could do the scallop circle dies. Or the, I think they're called the layering circles. Um, but check the online exclusives or the clearance rack. You know, go to Stampin' Up! and put in clearance, shop products clearance rack, uh, shop products online exclusives, because sometimes they will still have those like on the clearance if they don't have them um, producing them anymore. So there is our fun stepper rocker with our cows, which is called Cutest Cows. Um, yeah, they are the cutest cows. And then this was our kind of fun fold where it looks just like a standard card and then, ooh, no, it, it opens a little differently with that beautiful die there, that layering die. And we did a little embossing, so much fun. <laughs> well, there it is, you guys. I hope you enjoyed um, crafting with me today. If, um, oh, one other thing, there's also on my YouTube channel, you guys, remember I had a video where I had, um, I did Saturday Stamping Live, and I had accidentally purchased a die set twice. And so if you go on my YouTube channel and you are subscribed and you comment what you liked most about what I was sharing, and then you share the video, you have a chance to win that die set. And it was the, what dies was it? It was the dies that went with the greetings of the season and everyday greetings. They're kind of just label dies. So you have a chance to win those. And there's just, I'm gonna announce the winner next Wednesday. No, I'm gonna announce the winner on my Saturday Stampin' video. So that winner will be revealed there, so. There it is, you guys. Lots of ways about having chances to get free things. And then, of course, the 10% off bundle. And I can't put that in there. Never mind. 
I'll do it later. All right, you guys, I hope you have a great night. Um, I think I might do a blog with my cutest cows because they're just so cute. I don't know. We shall see. But there you go. I hope you guys have a great night. And until next time, happy stimping. <laughs>